The tenth statement, Armageddon, the great epic. Armageddon is the final battle between Christ and his followers on one side, and the beast and its forces gathered to fight the Lord on the opposite side during the last days. The battle will take place on Tel Megiddo in Palestine, from which the name of the battle was derived. It's considered the final and the fiercest battle in the future history of mankind. This battle is particularly mentioned in the book of Revelation, where John mentioned in the Revelation 16, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keep his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And after our returning master, the Christ, particularly pointed out who the beast and the dragon are, and after we declared that to the world, when we said that the dragon is signified by Great Britain, and the beast is signified by the NATO, led by the USA, we say that this great battle will be between the NATO and the followers of Christ and that all the states of this alliance will engage in a direct war with the Christ, thinking that they are siding with the right. We address our words to the Christians in the world, for you think that you are the sons of Christ, so how will you support your Christ while you support this allies and stand behind this strong wall that's Christ's arch enemy and the most powerful and brutal? O oh, people, Christ, despite his few followers and disciples, would triumph by the will of the Father over the most powerful and oppressive armies in the world, which is the NATO that the Bible described as the beast that has seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns in Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And so a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of the blasphemy. It is known that the heads and thrones signify the presidents and kings who are under this alliance to declare war against Christ and his disciples and the chosen ones at the time of the second coming. And when we count the number of heads, crowns, and horns, we find that they are 27. And this number represents the number of the NATO states, that are almost 27 as we all know. Despite the strength of this alliance, and the strength of the armies under the allied states, the Father will support Christ and his devoted chosen followers, and make him victorious over the most arrogant and tyrannical states in the world. And the end of Armageddon, the great battle, will certainly be victory for Christ over the satanic allies represented by America, Britain, and the allied states. And just as the Father promised in his holy book, the book of Revelation, despite the results of the final battle before it actually takes a place, in John's Revelation 20, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. The beast was taken and with him the false prophet who worked the signs in the sight with which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword of him who sat on the horse, the sword which came forth out of his mouth. 
All the birds were filled with their flesh. I tell you that you have to think a thousand times about who to support before dictating your lives to them. So perhaps you hear a call and you are lured by the media outlets you will listen to. Or perhaps Christ is in the rank of the camp you are fighting without actually knowing that.